it's no secret that I love a good home screen setup. And in fact, I've featured well over 100 different home screen setups throughout many different videos uploaded to my channel over the past four to five years. And whilst I just recently posted a video deep diving into how you can really level up the customization of the stock default launcher that ships with just about any Android phone, there are still a few phones that let you use third-party launchers with minimal impact to the overall fluidity of the phone. So with that in mind, I thought it'd be fun to put together a list of my top five favorite third-party home screen launchers. Now there are hundreds of different third-party launchers available on the Google Play Store, many of which I've even featured on my channel in the past, but I did set myself some rules that helped to limit which launchers could be featured in this video. Firstly, I need to have used the launcher in one way or another in the past. It's impossible for me to test every home screen launcher that lives on the Play Store, so limiting this list to only ones I've used helped a great deal. Secondly, the launchers have to be regularly updated. Now, it's not like I'm expecting weekly updates, but they need to have at least been updated once this year to be eligible. And thirdly, they need to offer some form of customization. It doesn't have to be a lot, but at the very least, let me tweak perhaps the icon pack or the grid sizing so that I can make things look a little more me. But with that out of the way, let's get to the first launcher. And so perhaps unsurprisingly, we're kicking things off with what is arguably the very best launcher of all time, Nova Launcher. If you're looking for the absolute best in terms of customization, then you really cannot look any further than Nova Launcher. Pretty much any setting you could ever think of can be customized within the app. You've of course got all the basics like icon theming, grid sizing and transition animations, but then there's also layers upon layers of deep level customization as well. I'm not gonna be able to cover everything in this video, but just to whet your appetite, you can customize the look of folders or even what buttons appear when you long press your app icons. You can even set up custom gestures or adjust the look of the notification badges. And then in the most recent update, the search functionality has been taken to another level altogether as well, to where you can now change what search provider is being used or the window corner radius of the search bar itself, as well as the background color, plus a heap more. One of the best features of Nova Launcher though, is that you can create backup files of your custom home screen setups. And this makes transferring them not only between your own devices, but also to other people on the internet, for example, really easy. Nova Launcher is such a powerful home screen launcher that about five years ago, I created an entire YouTube series based around the launcher itself called the best Nova Launcher setups. And if you take a quick look at the view counts of a lot of those videos, you'll quickly realize just how popular this launcher is. Now the launcher did kind of go MIA for a year or so, a little while ago, but then a closed beta version called Nova 7 went live about six months ago. And just recently it was officially released on the Play Store as well. It is a seriously fantastic launcher, particularly for customization purposes. And what makes it all the more impressive is just how long it's been around for. Second up, we have Launcher. And despite a complicated app release system, this launcher definitely goes toe to toe with Nova Launcher in terms of how often I've actually used it. In fact, I'd probably argue that in terms of full-time launchers I've used on my main everyday devices, Launcher probably beats out Nova Launcher. And the big reason for that is fluidity. See, whilst Nova kind of does its own thing in regards to UI, as evidenced in the settings menu, Launcher actually aims to provide you with as close a pixel launcher experience, but with leveled up customization. And so what this resulted in was slick looking home screens that were actually a joy to use as everyday setups because everything about the home screen felt really fluid. But don't let fluidity fool you because over the years, Launcher got a stack of updates that added in a bucket load of customization goodness. And to be completely honest, it got pretty close to Nova Launcher in terms of customization. The only significant feature I can think of that was missing was being able to add blank home screen pages. But everything else from icon theming to transition animations to even gestures and custom folder icons, all of that was possible with Launcher. And this meant for a lot of people, it was probably the number one alternative to Nova Launcher. What also improved Launcher's success was that it was one of the few Launcher applications that supported the Quick Switch Magisk module. This meant if you had a rooted phone, you could actually set Launcher up to essentially become your system's stock launcher. And this meant if you were a fan of using gestures, you could continue using them with Launcher and there would be no impact on animations or fluidity. 
This is actually the main reason I use Lawn Chair for so long, but I don't really root my main everyday devices anymore due to issues with broken apps. Now, the reason I mentioned Lawn Chair's complicated app release system is that if you take a look at the Google Play Store listing, it says it was last updated in 2019. But that doesn't mean the app is dead. It's just actually been in a permanent state of alpha testing. And if you wanna get the latest updates, well, they get released over on Telegram. They do also have a version that works with Android 11 and the updated version of Quick Switch if you still happen to use a rooted phone full time. But again, I'll always have a soft spot for Launch Air given how hard they worked to make a super fluid launcher really customizable. Oh, and the fact that it's always been completely free has made it even more impressive. And from there we have Action Launcher. Now I've tried and used Action Launcher many times in the past, although not as much of late if I'm being honest, but in terms of features and customization flexibility, it definitely seems to be nearly as powerful as both Launch Air and Nova Launcher. You get pretty much all the same customization capabilities, icon packs, grid sizing, gestures and shortcuts, all that good stuff, but then it also adds in a few handy features that are unique to Action Launcher itself. So for example, it plays host to features like shutters, which basically allows you to set up widgets in pop-up windows that are accessible just by swiping up on the relevant app icon. That's pretty cool. Or there's also the quick page feature, which is essentially like a second home screen that is hidden until you swipe it in from the right. It also integrates directly with the Action Dash Wellbeing application, which is pretty neat. Like Launch Air and Nova Launcher, you can also save and restore backup files, which is pretty much a must have for such feature dense launches like this one. But I think the main thing that has put me off from ever using it full time is that it just feels a little bit messy. Perhaps I've gotten too used to Nova Launcher's settings menu, but I think the issue is that Action Launcher tries to look like the Pixel Launcher's clean settings menu, but then I still often find it really hard to find many of the features I'm trying to customize. It does also feel like most of the good features that make Action Launcher unique are blocked by a paywall, and I'm not opposed to paying for an app by any stretch of the word. In fact, I've already paid for the Plus version of Action Launcher, but it does make it a little trickier to recommend. That aside, it's still a fantastic launcher that allows for some top shelf customization and it's still regularly updated. Okay, second to last is Hyperion Launcher. And I've always felt like this is a launcher that feels just as smooth and powerful as Launch Air, but with a bit of a different approach in regards to its UI. You can tell just by taking a quick look at the settings menu that it isn't trying for a stock look. And I will say it can take a little bit to get used to where all the different settings are, but if you take the time to learn the layout, you'll quickly realize it is just as powerful and customizable as pretty much every other launcher featured in today's list. All the icon theming you could want, check. Independent desktop, app drawer, and dock grid sizing, check. Backup file support, of course, and pretty much every other feature offered by the previous three launches is also available with Hyperion Launcher. Most of the good stuff is free as well, although some extra features like gestures or font editing and even the basic feature of disabling icon labels for some reason does require an upgrade to the premium version, but it's pretty cheap, so probably well worth the money if you like the launcher itself. Similar to Action Launcher, after becoming so accustomed to how Nova and Launch Air lay out their settings menus, I do find it somewhat complicated sifting through Hyperion's menu system to find what I'm looking for. And in fact, a lot of the settings take navigating through three pages before I can do what I'm wanting. So that does probably bring it down a few pegs, but for what it's worth, I do reckon it's a nicer UI overall than Action Launcher. But if you yet to check out Hyperion, then I highly recommend that you do. And finally, we have Niagara Launcher. And without question, this launcher takes a very different approach compared to the other launchers featured in today's video. Instead of offering you a fairly standard yet customizable home screen experience, Niagara instead attempts to offer you a completely redesigned home screen experience, one that prioritizes decluttering your home screen. Now, there are a number of other launchers you can find on the Play Store that also fit into this category, including Before Launcher or O Launcher, plus a heap more, but I definitely think Niagara is the best. On the main home screen, you basically just have five icons for your favorite apps, a handy clock and date widget, and then a scrollable sidebar to navigate through all of your other installed apps. Despite how minimal it is, it does feel pretty intuitive, and I actually reckon it's quicker to locate apps not on the home screen with this alphabet sidebar configuration compared to a standard app drawer. 
The app also offers some pretty impressive levels of customization, like icon theming, the ability to hide apps, and even pop-up folders, which is kind of like the shutters feature found within Action Launcher. But more than that, it just feels really fluid as well. It's probably not a launcher that I'll ever use full time, but I really like it nonetheless. And so that's it. Those are my top five home screen launcher applications as of right now. Now, as I said at the start, there are a huge amount of home screen launcher applications that you can find on the Google Play Store. So let's make the comment section an open discussion on which launcher is everyone's favorite and why. Aside from that, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thank you all very much for watching and I will catch you later.